Hi, I'm Gary Stearman. Good to be with you, and we're going to talk about your favorite subject today, the rapture of the church. Now, I could sit here and talk about the rapture of the church. It's my favorite subject, too. Uh, but I have a guest. His name is Ken Johnson. Welcome, Ken, to Prophecy Watch. Thank you. And we have a favorite subject today, uh, but it's also very complex and somewhat disputed. And let's put it this way. The rapture of the church is a, an interesting topic. <sighs> yes, too good to be true. No, because the thing that typifies our Lord and our God is grace. Mm -hmm. And you find grace in the rapture, I think, like nowhere else. Uh, the grace of God <clears throat> finding its way into the tangled web of a world in which we live today with the promise that we will be taken home. And Christ has also promised that he's gone to prepare a place for us and he's going to come back and he's going to take us home. And that's the rapture. And all these ideas are tied up together. But knowing Ken, I know that he's kind of taken a different tack. Uh, he reads the Dead Sea Scrolls and he goes through little details. And when he looks at something and writes about it, you always read it and you say, I've never seen that before. Wow, that's, that's, in, that's incredible. So what about the rapture, Ken? Uh, what would you say to somebody who asks you the question, well, what is it? Well, I believe uh, in a pre-trib rapture. And I believe it's a time when the church is caught away for the Lord to basically cleanse the earth. It's kind of preparatory for the kingdom age when the Messiah comes. And a lot of people argue on a pre-trib, mid-trib and stuff like that. But I yeah. think if you look at Daniel chapter 12, it very clearly shows the, the pre-trib rapture. I'd like to hear about that. In fact, I'm, I have opened my Bible to Daniel 12 before we came on today. Well, in Daniel 12, when you look at it closely, it talks about there's a time where there's a resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in Paul in Second or First Thessalonians and in First Corinthians talks about the resurrection rapture happening together. And in one place he says it's in the twinkling of an eye. Yes. So if the resurrection is happening there, so is the rapture. And some of the people are shining, and I believe that to be the glorified bodies. I don't think it's symbolic. I think it's literal. So if there's a rapture resurrection that happens, then it says that there's a time, time and a half to the time of the persecution when the abomination is set up. And then it talks about from the time of the abomination to the end of these things, there's 1,290 days. Now, 12, a time, time and a half would be 1,260. Right. So 1,260 is not the same as 1,290. So if you have basically three and a half years to the middle, three and a half years to the end, then that's a pre-trib rapture. It might be right there at the very beginning, or it might just be sometime before but it can't be in the middle or sometime during the tribulation period, according to Daniel 12. I'm like anybody else who uh, pursues the Lord uh, in, in my scripture reading, my prayer life, my actions. I, I try to do what's right, and sometimes I say, wow, I could have done that better. Did I do that right? Lord, correct me if I'm wrong. We all have those kinds of doubts. Mm -hmm. And those doubts affect our peace of mind. And uh, you get even, and I've had people tell me, well, <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to go in the rapture because I just don't think I deserve it. Mm -hmm. Not living a good enough Christ, uh, Christian life to really go in the rapture. Uh, how do you address that? Well, they're, they're not understanding the purpose of the rapture. And I think one of the key things, there's actually a Dead Sea Scroll that talks about it. It's the Book of Enoch. And it talks about a time when a group of people go, and we're referring that to the rapture. And it says that the reason for the rapture is to engender repentance. And that makes sense if you think about it. You and I talk about the rapture, and people are like, that subject again, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, over and over. I don't over. want to talk about the rapture anymore. Then all of a sudden, you and I disappear, along with millions of people. Yeah. Now, they've never believed, they've never become a Christian, but they've heard it all. Now, all of a sudden, they think, could this actually be real? And a large section of them are going to be saved. We see that in Revelation, the, the great multitude coming out yes. of the tribulation. So if the purpose of the rapture is to give people one last chance to understand this is real and to repent of their sins, 
then that makes sense. And whether you and I are worthy of it doesn't really matter. We need to be taken away for the sign to have its effect. Now, I'm looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse 16. Now, the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout and voice, the archangel, the trump of God. And the phrase I wanted to ask you about is this next phrase, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So a lot, of, a lot of Christians have died and been buried or lost at sea or whatever uh, since the Lord ascended into the heavens. That's, it's mm -hmm. A lot of Christians are going to rise first in the rapture. <clears throat> um, how do we take that? That is to say, uh, how should we understand what the Lord's doing here? Well, I think at a certain point we all get resurrected and or rapture changed in some form. And I think he's trying to say, number one, all Christians, everyone that's died in Messiah, will have a glorified body. And then uh, the resurrection is one thing, but then there's a handful of us that are left that have to catch up with them. And that would be, if, if we're here at that time, uh, be changed also. And by the way, being changed is, is part of the operation. Taken up, that's wonderful. But being changed, mm -hmm. um, how do you see that? There are so many creatures in the heavens. If you read scripture, read the Bible cover to cover, you run into all kinds of angels. Uh, various angels are not all the same, as you right. well know. And uh, there are myriads of creatures in, in God's creation. And we're going to be raised up uh, how exactly? Will we look just like we do now, except be immortal? What, what? A lot of people think that we'll be able to recognize each other in a glorified form. Paul says we don't know exactly what it'll be like, but we know we'll be like him. And so if you take him as an example, he was a man like us. Yes. He died and he resurrected. And then sometimes people recognized him and sometimes they didn't. Sometimes he just appeared in a locked room. He was definitely more than the average man at that point. And so it's, it'll be interesting. But they did recognize him. They did know who he was. He knew who they were. Ken has a real gift for going back and sort of unscrambling the facts that have been lost in history. And I'm, I'm sure many of you have read uh, his books on the Dead Sea Scrolls and, and very detailed. But uh, as I'm looking at your rapture book, uh, The Table of Contents, you have uh, some historical notes in here, historical, historical chapters, pre-millennial first century church, the day of the Lord, revealing the Antichrist, the birth pangs. You go through various topics uh, how did you build this book? That is to say, uh, what should we expect and, and what are you trying to tell us when we read well, your book on the rapture? A, a lot of people try to say there's a pre-med, uh, or I mean pre or mid or post-trib rapture. And if you take one of those other positions, you usually do it for a certain reason. Uh -huh. So I try to go there first and say, okay, there's a seven year tribulation period that ends at a second coming. And first we understand the millennium and then we build on that pre, mid, or post, and then if it's this, what would this mean? So what is the day of the Lord? What is the rapture? What are these terms? And we go back in the early church fathers, Dead Sea Scrolls, other writings, all through the Bible, and kind of come to a conclusion of what the terms mean. And then when you read the text, understanding the terms for sure, it's pretty clear. Now, I'm sure you've been in the discussion about pre, mid, or post-trib. And uh, how do you address that? Um, basically, I, I'm, I'm pre. Uh, one time I went to a, a church to teach and a lady came up and she said, do you, do you believe in the rapture? And I said, yes. She said, well, I don't. And I'm like, oh, that's dangerous, you know, because at that point I'm thinking cult or something because yeah. everybody knows about the term. And I said, well, what do you think First Thessalonians 4 means? And I read her, you know, what you just read. And she's like, oh, well, I, I believe that. I just think it happens at, at the second coming. And I said, well, in that case, you're a post-trib rapture person. You don't want to say, I don't believe in a rapture, because then we think you're a cult or something. We get scared. And she's like, no, no, I didn't mean that. So then I talk with her a few minutes more, and it's, it's like, well, if it's post-trib, so do we go up and come right back down? And if it's post-trib, who are the people that have kids in the millennium? And there, there's a lot of questions yeah, like that. And she, and she basically said, well, I, I guess I'm more mid-trib. I'm just not pre and so I said, okay, well, that, that's good enough. We can talk later. 
But it's interesting how the terminology, if you just ask the right questions, just get people to think. There has to be a rapture, there has to be a second coming, it can't be post, and there's some very specific reasons why it can't be mid. Uh, but you just have to ask the right questions. As you might imagine, uh, in our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, which by the way is a monthly magazine, and uh, I hope you follow it because we uh, cover topics like this uh, and in great depth, uh, which we have the time and space to do in the magazine, and uh, hope you'll avail yourself of The Prophecy Watcher, by the way. Everything that we're doing at Prophecy Watchers is vital because Bible prophecy is coming to pass right before our eyes. And it has never been more important for believers to understand what the Bible says about the days that we are living in. In case you haven't noticed, the whole world is spinning out of control, but we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran, China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. The Prophecy Watcher magazine features articles from leading prophecy experts like Gary Stearman, Mondo Gonzalez, Thomas Ice, Randall Price, L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, and many others. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs that feature in-depth teaching on the ancient book of Enoch, heaven and the new Jerusalem, the biblical case for the rapture, a look at how God put the gospel in the stars, what really happened at the Tower of Babel, and Ezekiel's prophecy on the battle of Gog and Magog, this special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Now, Ken, let's, let's really get into the subject here. <clears throat> let's... And that you do this so well. You go back to the time of the fall of the angels, the rise of man, uh, the flood, and, and and you come up to the ancient scrolls and and what they have to say about what this earth has gone through and what it's going to go through. And you've really done a job of research on uh, on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, do you ever find anything in the Dead Sea Scrolls that uh, might have something to do with our belief system about the rapture of the church? Yeah, there's actually several things. Hmm. One of the things that's interesting is in 2 Thessalonians 2, Paul talks about the restrainer. Yeah. Something restrains the system. And in Greek, it actually says when it comes out of the midst. And when you see something like that, it should be explained unless Paul's expecting you to know it's an idiom and know exactly what it means. That's why it's not explained. So you have to go yes. find out what the idiom means. <laughs> and there's a couple of church fathers and a couple of Dead Sea Scrolls that talk about that. The term out of the midst actually refers to a rapture, like when Enoch was taken up and Elijah was taken up. And uh, there's a commentary on the book of Revelation written about 200. And in the commentary, it talks about the, that particular verse is when the church is caught up out of the midst. So that when the church is raptured. So it was a consistent teaching through the time of the scrolls, through the time of the, the early church fathers. So if we understand that, when Paul says, when it, the restrainer, is taken out of the midst, that's a rapture term. So the only rapture left, that, I mean, if you were raptured by yourself, it wouldn't really change the world. But when the church itself is taken out, it changes things. So we know he's talking about the rapture of the church. And then when you plug that into 2 Thessalonians, again, it, it shows a pre-trib. 
Now, when we look at First and Second Thessalonians, as well as many other uh, epistles of Paul, uh, we see the church going through difficulty. And in fact, all of the apostles went through great difficulty. Mm -hmm. Christians today go through great difficulty. And you can ask the Lord, Lord, what, what should I believe about this? Now, I think that's all a part of the Christian walk. Uh, the Christian mm. walk involves your, uh, if you will, discovering who you are in Christ. Uh, and, and sometimes that involves um, some difficult decisions, some setbacks, a little illness here and there, who knows. But again, we have the blessed hope. And we should never let these thoughts that go through our mind disturb our thoughts about the blessed hope. And I, I want you to talk to that for, for a bit because that subject is on my mind all the time. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it is important because we, we need to understand that I'm sure we can find somebody that's worse than you and somebody that's much better than you. And same with me. So we're all kind of in the same boat. We're all sinners. None of us are perfect. But the Lord loves us enough that he sent his son to die for us so that we can be saved. So we still make mistakes. And yes, yeah. if you would have paid more attention, maybe you wouldn't have had the car accident. Maybe you wouldn't have had the, the health problem. Uh, but maybe the Lord allowed it as a teaching. So if someone's thinking that, you know, they've messed up really bad and they come to find out when you were a teenager, when I was a teenager, we yeah. messed up just actually a little worse than that. And then they might think, so then there's a chance. Yes, there's a chance you can get saved. And so this whole concept, am I good enough to go in the rapture? Are you a believer? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? If you're a believer, you're a believer. And believers go in the rapture. And again, it's not because we deserve it, but it's to show the rest of the world when the Christians are gone. I have a question. And somebody, and I, I, I know you're out there, <clears throat> He used the word believer. And the first thing that happened in your mind is you said to yourself, am I? I wonder if I'm a believer. I think I am. Am I a believer? Hmm. Speak to that question. Well, the basically, Jesus died for our sins, everybody. Yeah. So if you as an as a individual realize and you believe the story that you're told, that we are a sinner, we all have a sin nature, that's pretty easy for me to believe that I'm not perfect. But I need to be perfect in order to stand before a holy God. But yeah. Jesus fixed that. And all I have to do is accept him as my Lord and try my best to follow him. I'm not going to do a perfect job, but I'm going to try my best to follow him. And that makes me a believer. I wouldn't do that if I'm not a believer. The book is called The Rapture. Uh, it's uh, uh, the pre-tribulational -tribu rapture of the church viewed from the Bible and the ancient church. Now, and I wanted to read the subtitle here, and the ancient church, because the ancient church, that is the church that lived at the time just after Christ uh, was taken aloft, was serious in a different way, I think, than we are serious now. Mm. Uh, they had just come through horrific times with the, the, the Roman Empire. And they were shattered and fragmented. There was wars and, and rumors of wars. And of course, uh, they went through many things that are much worse than what we have had to go through in our lifetimes. But uh, you view the rapture, and I love the subtitle, uh, from the point of view of the ancient church. And that's sort of the way you think, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like for instance, there's this uh, rumor that keeps floating around that the pre-trib rapture was invented by Darby or someone in the 1700s. Uh -huh. And the thing is, um, I'm sure you know somebody who's a pre-trib and a post-trib and a mid-trib and maybe others, different people. So for me to say that yes. nobody has ever been pre or post or mid until five minutes ago, it's ob obviously not correct. I mean, obviously one or two of those is wrong, but people have believed it. So when you go back to the early church and you see that there are people that believe in a rapture, there are several, there's at least six or seven first and second century fathers that are very clearly pre-trib. And a lot of people in the middle, middle ages, several. So Darby made it popular, but he didn't invent it. 
did not invent it for sure. <clears throat> in fact, in, in a way, the Lord had to deal with him kind of roughly. He had, had a riding accident where he broke a leg and had, he had to lie in bed for a good while. And uh, his, uh, actually there are two, three biographies of Darby and, and his, his re recuperation time is covered. And that recuperation time brought him to the point of the, of the rapture of the church. Now you think about this and you think, here I am, you know, John Nelson Darby, I'm, I am somebody who's respected as an academician and I've got a brilliant future and bang, I fall off my horse, get, my leg is broken, I'm in terrible pain, I lie in bed, people have to wait on me, what can I do? Well, you can read the Bible, which is what he did. And he came to a new understanding about the destiny of the church. Mm -hmm. And, but he didn't do it by himself. I think it was partly of what he read from history and partly um, the Lord being able to speak to him because he was incapacitated. He sort of had to listen. Mm. And <laughs> this happens to all of us. And I think this is part of life. And so you've got this wonderful contrast between the rigors of life and going home to be with the Lord. And this, uh, I think this is the subject that Christians should think about a lot of the time. And I know you do. Yeah, I, I do. And I, again, the, the more I study, the more I see people that believed in a pre-trib rapture, and it's just really amazing. You, I'm going to ask you something. First, I'd, I'd like to, to mention that uh, uh, we have all kinds of marvelous uh, things to offer you here at uh, Prophecy Watchers. And, and uh, let's just pause for a moment and, uh, and show you some of the things that we do have. It may surprise you, but 80% of Christians do not believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Many are convinced the church will endure the entire seven-year tribulation. Others teach that Christians will face part of the tribulation. Still others believe the prophecies of the Bible were all fulfilled in 70 AD, tossing aside the book of Revelation and its end-time prophecies. There are certainly lots of opinions out there. Ken Johnson takes a welcomed, biblically-based, common-sense approach to the rapture debate in his book, The Rapture. He provides real answers to all the pre-trib objections. This book is also an excellent primer on the Day of the Lord, Old Testament prophecies concerning the rapture, the Antichrist, and the Great Apostasy. The Rapture is available for your gift of $20 or more, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. To our international friends, please note that additional shipping fees will apply and all quoted prices are in U.S. dollars. You can request Ken's book, The Rapture, by calling the toll-free number you see on your screen 24-7, or you can visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. Ken is a well-respected prophecy writer, authoring close to 30 books on subjects that few people will ever hear about in church. We've chosen six of his books that happen to be some of our favorites. The Ken Johnson Rapture Collection includes The Rapture, The Ancient Book of Daniel, The End Times by the Ancient Church Fathers, The Ancient Epistle of Barnabas, Third Corinthians, Ancient Gnostics and the End of the World, and the Ancient Epistles of John and Jude. When you order the Ken Johnson Rapture Collection for your gift of $75, we're going to send you Ken's six books along with a free bonus DVD of a presentation Ken gave examining the Dead Sea Scrolls and what they have to say about the rapture. Our ministry exists to take as many people as possible with us in the rapture and to keep as many people as possible out of the tribulation. Will you stand with us today? The hope we have in Christ, the blessed hope, should encourage you to share the good news of the gospel. Be certain to take your friends and family with you when Jesus returns. I'm Gary Stearman. And the gentleman beside me has written this book, The Rapture. Ken Johnson, Ken Johnson, THD, it says here. And if anybody deserves that, uh, that little footnote on their name, it's you. Uh, oh, you, you, you are a student of the Word. 
And I, if you haven't read any of Ken's things, you really don't know what I mean by that. But when I say a student of the word, you go very, very deeply into historical subjects. And a lot of people <clears throat> are bored with history. You're not bored with history. Not anymore. I was when I was in high school. <laughs> and I'll bet that a lot of people who've read your books are not bored with history either. Uh, uh, I would hope not. <laughs> We're talking about the present, and we're talking about our blessed hope and the rapture of the church and some of Ken's uh, thoughts, of which he's expressed in this book, simply called The Rapture. Where do we go with this discussion right now? Uh, how about controversy? How about um, uh, opposition? Have you ever been opposed by somebody who just said, well, you're crazy if you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of the church? Yeah, I, I think I've... I think we've all been there, actually. <laughs> but yeah, it's and it's nothing to argue about. And that, that's the thing that we got to realize. We're not the ones that defend it. And it's not like if you don't defend it well enough, it won't happen. Right. It's going to happen. So we're just there to teach and people can, can understand it, uh, choose to do something else. But uh, we're not going to disfellowship someone for for thinking that we're wrong or anything like that. When you read uh, about, and Paul has, I think, probably more to say than anybody else uh, about the rapture, but when you read, uh, and I'm kind of thumbing the pages here in First and Second Thessalonians, and I'm seeing uh, the rapture, and then I'm seeing a man of sin being revealed, and uh, we've got um, almost a couple of minutes here. Uh, let's, let's talk about that man of sin. You think he's alive today? He might be. And the church will be taken out before he is re revealed at the, to the point that he can do his work. Right. Yeah. Someone may be able to figure out who he is beforehand or something. But the revealing of the Antichrist, as Paul explains it, is when he signs the peace covenant. And so uh, there's a restrainer that holds all that back. And the restrainer, according to Paul, is something that's taken out of the midst, which is an old idiom from the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Church Fathers, meaning a rapture. So if you put all that together, we are holding back just simply because we keep preaching the gospel. Once we're removed, it'll engender repentance, plus it'll give an opportunity for all of that to come, and then the Antichrist can sign the covenant. And of course, that's the sign that he is the Antichrist. Now that's grace. The Lord takes us home before the unveiling of the man of sin and, and all the horrors that will follow uh, in his footsteps. And this is something really, when you look at the world today and you look at everything that could go wrong, uh, you say, thank the Lord that we have that, that blessed hope, that promise. Amen. Well, Ken, may the Lord bless your work. Come back soon. We'll talk to you again, and uh, we'll be reading your books in the meantime. Great. Thank you. I'm Gary Stearman, and this is Prophecy Watchers. Hey, you keep watching. We are. <laughs>